to wipe things in. Like that. That's the way this country's going to end if we don't do something about it. It's because once we didn't have to put up with people like you. Now he's a proud nation. Now there is a great coffee bowl in the universe. Blacks, brindles, yellows, reds, and every other shade under the sun. Yeah, I was walking down the street the other day, and everybody's looking at me because that's the only white geezer down there, wasn't I? The whole place was full of niggers. Why <laughs> do people want to emigrate? Don't even look at me like that, son. Hey, I'll come down there and kick your teeth in. Where's he gone? How's he getting? I can't see him at all. The curtain's in the way. Oh, I know. She's such a fucking fool. Oh, no. She's such a fucking fool. Quite so bad, are they? You know, they at least contribute something to the society. Like reggae music, you know, I've always been into reggae and things. And they wear sharp clothes and all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now they're pretty cool. And they mix well too, like we go out and bear girls and they go out and bear girls. And they're strapping lads. So there's a sort of respect there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm tacky. I'm here to say, What's a packy contribute to the society? Smelly foods, funny clothes, and greasy air. <laughs> and a pack of religious freaks and all, so their girls won't go out and do again nothing. On top of which, how do you respect someone? So when you hit them, they just lie down. We've <laughs> been asking for a kick in the teeth, aren't they? You've got to oblige sometimes, you know, pretty old Dr. Martin, did you? But getting back to other things, can you imagine those days of the Empire? There we were, colonies all over the world. Singapore, Malaya, Australia, Africa, New Zealand, India. I used to start all night with my granddad listening to stories about it. About the great campaigns and the conquests. You know, they used to walk hundreds of miles on some of those campaigns. Hundreds of miles. And we was respected throughout the world as the greatest nation on earth. The greatest. You see, we was British. We was British and we was proud of it. And being British, we could go anywhere. Anywhere, and people call out to us and say, Hello, Anglais! And we'd walk with our heads up high. And we're going to walk with our heads up the guy again. Because we was British and we was on the moon. And being on the moon, we were strong. And if we want to get this country out of the and now we have to be strong again. We have to be on the move again. The British on the moon. The British movement. And we're going to have to unite. Unite as one nation. As one white Anglo nation. And as a nation we'll forge our way to the front. To the front. As a nation. As a national front. You don't understand, do you? No. <laughs> you poor, pathetic creatures. <laughs> you just don't understand. Now look, you say to me, because we colonised these places, we now got to let the geezers from these places into this country. You say it's our moral obligation. Well, don't give me any of this moral obligation for imperialism crap. Send the buggers back to where they come from. <laughs> but we can't afford them, can we? Right, look. When I was a nipper, I used to dream of becoming a great explorer. Well, I grew out of that, didn't I? So I started to work towards my career. I was going to be a carpenter. So I worked out all my life at school, just so I could get a good apprenticeship and all. Work hard, boy, and you'll find 
one day you'll have a job like mine. A job like mine. So what happens? I go to down there. Sorry, son, no vacancies. No bloody vacancies. I look through the door, and everybody on the shop floor is either West Indian or packing. Jobs for foreigners, but not for me, because I'm white, and we've got to look after the niggers before we look after the whites. Otherwise, everybody's going to say we're racially prejudiced, aren't they? <laughs> racially prejudiced. I was reading in the Clan the other day, that's a Ku Klux Klan journal, and they were saying, <laughs> if you open your mind up a little bit, you find there's some very enlightening articles in there. <laughs> and they were saying that the only prejudice in this country is against the whites. If there's not enough jobs for us, we gotta get rid of this other muck. English jobs for English lads. And the only way we're gonna do that, ladies and gentlemen, is if we clean this country up. And the only way we're gonna clean this country up is if we get our self-respect back. And the only way we're gonna get our self-respect back, ladies and gentlemen, is if we unite, as I said before. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna unite. I want everybody standing up where they are. Stand! I might say anybody I see not standing, I'll come down and severely kick. And what I want you to do is put your fist in the air like that. Everybody, I want you to look at that fist, and know that is your fist of power and your fist of might. Now I want you to say one word, and that word will unite us, and that word is hate. I want you to say it softly to start with, and then we'll work it up into a nice big crescendo. Okay? One, two, three. Ha! That was pathetic. <laughs> this time I want to hear it come from your mouth. One, two, three. Ha! Hold on! Come on, get it out! Stand up your feet! Ha! Ha! Are we united? Ha! As one nation! Ha! As one! Ha! One! Ha! Anglo! Ha! Nation! Sit down now. astonished me to see how people were thinking over there at the time. Well, that's where I got the idea for doing the first one. It was originally a two and a half hour piece, and that's the abridged version of it. We couldn't get the finance to do the original version. 